Hi everyone. Um, first of all, I hope this is working. <laughs> um, I'm very new to this um, Facebook Live situation. Oh, I think I see one person is here, so this is good news. Um, so first of all, good morning, hello. Um, I was teaching yesterday for a few different studios at once. Um, and I didn't have an opportunity to really introduce myself. So, um, my name is Kat Aquaviva. Um, I grew up here in Elmhurst, actually, and have been living, you know, away from home since I was just out of high school. Um, but I just recently moved back here from Los Angeles when all of this craziness started. And I'm living here for some time. I don't know how long, but I'll be here for some time. And um, I feel really blessed to be able to connect with my hometown community here um, through mission. Kelly and I have known each other since we were in like third grade or something. I borrowed a Halloween costume from her. I was grapes um, in third grade. But anyway, so it's really exciting to be able to teach all of you and and have like a little more of a connection to my home so um, I'll be teaching through mission on Tuesday Wednesdays and Thursdays um, all free for all of you so um, it's gonna be like an open level level one two situation we all know that's so subjective levels are so subjective just based on who's teaching but Hopefully you get a feel for my style of vinyasa and hopefully you enjoy it. So um, today we're just going to need um, two blocks or block-ish type of things, um, like big Tupperware containers or two water bottles of the same height or if I want to get creative, whatever you've been using as um, props. Hopefully you have some legit yoga props. Um, and a belt, any belt will do. Um, if you don't have a belt that's long enough, you could use like a towel draped over your foot, like a hand towel you can hold either side, um, something like that. But get creative with your props and lay down on your backs on your mat, okay? So um, if you do have legit blocks with you, what you'll do is put one on the left side of your mat on the medium facet. I'd say about like a foot away from the edge of your mat. And have the other one handy, okay? Lay on your back and I want you to, oh wait, let me just say one strange thing because I know it will happen. Um, I have a little bit of a funky heart issue going on and you'll, it'll definitely happen. I'll have to stop at some point through class and just give myself a carotid artery massage. Um, don't panic, it's, it's totally normal. I'm just trying to slow my heart rate down. I'm safe, I'm healthy, but just give me a heads up if I stop and do a weird neck massage, okay? Anyway, so lay on your back um, and take your low level block and nestle it into your right outer hip, okay? Take your belt, and you can just make like a little foot loop, doesn't need to be bigger than that. Put it around the ball of your right foot, and then extend your foot up towards the ceiling so you've got a nice long leg. Now, start to spread your toes apart, flex both of your feet, and I want you to pressurize your left thigh down and into the ground. Walk your hands up the belt until your elbows are straight-ish and just let your arms kind of plug the shoulders down and into the sockets. And then I want you to also firm up the front of your right leg so it's not like dead fish heat. Really energize your legs and then start to push your whole right thigh forward. All the while you're taking these beautiful, big breaths, inhales and exhales, starting to match each other in length, but really you're just bringing intelligence to the breath so that you enhance the quality of your breathing. So I'll do that as well. It's 
spread your collarbones. And this one's pretty tricky, but can you release your pubic bone forward and down so that it brings a little bit of a lumbar curve into your low back. And then let your leg just kind of open to the side and you should feel that your hip lands on the block. It's a boundary so that your leg doesn't go too deep towards the floor. Even if you have that kind of availability in your body, create this kind of healthy boundary and then take the belt and loop it underneath your neck Hold the belt in your left hand and then start to pull on the belt with your left hand so that it acts as a pulley system and draws the toes up as high as you'd like them at this point. Now, hypermobile friends especially, but everyone do this. Plug your right femur deeper into the hip socket so that it brings them, um, like some continuity and stability into the pelvis given this extreme um, position Spread your chest, let your skull drop, and keep that activity through your left leg. Just three big breaths here. Inhale, and exhale, and two more, breathe in, breathe out, last one, in. And out. Okay, release some of that tension on your belt, unloop your neck, and then take your leg back up towards the ceiling. You'll bend your knees so that you have access to remove the belt loop, and take your right leg and cross it all the way over to the left side of the mat until your shin lands on that medium facet block. When it does, pressurize the shin down, Lift your left hip up and just kind of scoot your butt back a little bit. And as you open your chest really wide, I want you to push your skull down, lift your left back and left shoulder, and just inch it up to the left. So you're just clarifying the twist, giving yourself a longer left waist. And then with your own pelvis, I want you to move the right outer hip crease down. It's almost like you're trying to squeeze your right sitting bone down towards the floor or towards your left upper inner thigh. Spread your chest. And you're just going to breathe into any area of sensation. If you feel most limitations in this pose in the pecs or somewhere along your spine or the side of the waist, just breathe into that area. One more. Unravel your twist until your pelvis is on the floor. Situate yourself along the midline of your mat. And just let your legs remain bent and your arms open wide. Just feel the difference, the kind of impact you've made on your body asymmetrically. And straighten your legs and see if one leg feels longer than the other. You can sigh anytime. <sighs> okay. Second sigh. You can bend your knees to begin. Take your belt loop around your left foot. And I like a nice snug fit so that it's not sliding around and baggy on. Extend your left heel up towards the ceiling and you can just shift your blocks. So your left block now um, comes and nestles right up against your left hip. Right block into the higher. Slide your right heel forward until both legs are straight. And just make this about your right leg to begin. Find an inner spiral of your right leg. Push down through the femur and start to flex your foot and spread your toes apart. And same thing goes on the left leg, but on the left side, what you can do is really add um, the left hip crease dropping down. It's almost as if there was um, another belt that was attaching your left hip and your right foot, which is a thing you can do. I'll teach it to you someday. So walk your hands up the belt, 
Feel your arm bones plugging down towards the floor so your shoulder blades meet the ground and have a connection with the floor. And then take big breaths, work to expand the chest even though the arms are kind of closing in towards the midline. And then again, see if rather than letting your tailbone hook up towards the ceiling, see if you can hook the tailbone down towards the floor to give yourself a longer low belly. Keep that kind of intelligence in the pelvis and see if your leg can come up a little bit higher, any amount higher. If not, that's totally cool. Take two more breaths. And just one more. Allow your leg to open up to the side. Land your outer hip on the block and then scoot the belt underneath your neck, okay? Grip onto the belt with your right hand and then pull on the belt to affect your left leg. Now, more is not always better, okay? So especially for people that are really flexible, going to the depth of each of your poses is not what's most, um, it's not top on the priority list. Instead, you want to think about how you're embodying each pose. So find this external rotation of your left leg. Spread the toes on the feet so your feet are awake. And then pressurize your right thigh down. Now, even here, see if you can move your pubis down and then plug your femur deeper into the hip socket. Open the chest wide. Feel your neck long, your throat open. And let's just take three more breaths here. I'll be quiet. Hear the sound of your breath. Creating that gentle constriction at the back of your throat. your neck, take your leg back up towards the ceiling, bend your knee in towards your chest so you can remove your belt, and then take your whole shin and cross it over to the far side of the mat until it lands onto your block. Okay, ground the shin, lift your right hip and pinch it back a little. Open the chest, press skull down and free up your whole right back. Inch it up and to the right. Open your arms and then start to hook your top hip down and away from the ribs on that same side. Since you're at home, feel free to sound the breath anytime you want. Only some of us feel comfortable doing that in a public group class, but um, it feels good. So, you know, let this be your own practice. Let this feel like your own personal time to do what you need to do. Okay. And we'll just roll onto your backs once again. Realign your body in the middle. Keep your knees bent, your arms super wide, and then just feel your body in space. Straighten both of your legs and see if you feel a little more symmetrical. Okay, bring both of your knees once again. You can roll to the side or you can rock up to a seated pose. Crisscross your legs. Or you're welcome to sit in your asana if that's your seat of choice. And I always suggest lifting your butt up on something, at least a little bit of something, so that your hips are above your knees and you can really establish that lower lumbar curve. Rock forward towards your pubis just a little bit. Slip your hands onto your thighs and bring poise and intelligence into the seat. So with your eyes closed. And when you align yourself in this simple pose, it's as if you're extending an antenna right up from the crown of your head and it gives you more availability to your consciousness. It just automatically 
really shifts um, your perspective, your state of mind, your state of being. So allow this to organically happen and just notice what you came to your mat with today. what's on your mind. Notice how you feel in your physical body. And give yourself permission to really make this a personal practice, as I mentioned. Take your hands into a prayer at your heart. And let's all take cleansing breath, a huge breath in, fill your lungs up to capacity, and just clear it out the mouth, and take a slow breath in, we'll sound only together. Reach down and grab your ankle with your right hand 
and then start to turn the heart up. I'm going to take a huge inhale here. As you exhale, circle the arm towards the floor. Inhale, reach it all the way back up to the ceiling. And I want you to let your spine start to undulate with the circling of the arm. Do this one more time, reaching all the way up. As you exhale, circle the arm down. And we'll take a modified side plank on the left. Ground your left palm, spin your right foot in, and take your right arm up and over your head. Now open up your right waist just as you did in that modified Karigasana a second ago. Take a big inhale to right waist. And as you exhale, we'll take what we'll call an asymmetric squat. I want you to turn your feet in towards the midline. Sit on your left heel and then lean towards your right leg. Connect inner, um, outer shoulder, inner knee. And then start to take this open twist to the left. Should feel really nice. Big inhale. And exhale. Take the hands to the floor. Extend your right leg for a cat and cow in the shape with the leg extended. As you exhale, drop your skull round and dome your spine. Only one more time. Inhale, arch the back, looking up. Pull with the heels of the hands. Exhale, round your spine. Push with the palms. Put your knees down. Breathe in. Look forward. As you exhale, shift back, butt to heels. Crawl your fingertips forward. Let your skull drop down. Long in the sides of the waist. One breath in here. And breathe out. Look forward. Stand up on your shins. Lift your arms right away as you can. Heels of the hands press up, up, up. Draw your left knee up and into the chest. Open it up, set your foot down. Hug in, push up through the hands, and move the pubis forward, okay? Accentuate the length in the sides of the waist without flittering your ribs forward. Smooth your front ribs down, lift your back ribs up, and start to take your side bend, okay? So even here, you're thinking about cutting the hip crease down to give you more length through your left waist especially. Big inhale, as you exhale, lean a little bit further so that your elbow either comes inside of the knee or you reach down and grip your ankle with the hand, okay? Pressurize an um, arm into leg, leg into arm to help you spiral the heart up. Take an inhale, looking up. As you exhale, circle the arm down. Inhale, reach it all the way up. Exhale the arm down one more time. Inhale all the way up to the ceiling. Exhale, bring the palm down to the floor. Modified side plank, right side. Left arm comes all the way up and over your head. And I'm pressurizing my right hand towards the block it's closest to to help me really scrub the left foot down. Big inhale, turning the heart up. And as you exhale, take your asymmetric squat. Sit on your right heel. Now nestle your left shoulder inside of the knee and use it to pressurize the left chest forward. Turn and open in this twist. Big inhale. And exhale. Bring the hands down. Just straighten your left leg out to the side. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, round your spine, pushing the hands down. Inhale, pull with the hands. Move the sternum forward through the upper arms. Exhale, round your back. Put your knees on the ground, breathe in. Tuck the toes, arch your back for a cow spine. As you exhale, take a downward facing dog, lifting the hips up and back. Okay, so feel free to pedal your feet if that feels intuitive to you. And just kind of start to get acclimated here. As you inhale, I want you to lift your right leg up, keeping your hips square. And as you exhale, step forward to your right thumb. Lightly reach for your block or block-like thing. Straighten your front leg, anchoring your left heel towards the floor, but keeping the leg parallel. And as you breathe in, just extend the sternum forward like you're aiming to back bend. As you exhale, undulate the spine down. Just two more times like that. Inhale, roll up through your back, look forward. Exhale, release and fold. One more, inhale, roll up. Exhale and release. As you breathe in, come back up, right? You'll bend your front knee, move your blocker it was a moment ago. Root your back heel 
down to the floor for a warrior two. Take an inhale as you circle your arms up. As you exhale, settle in. Now what you'll do is feel that your left leg is inwardly spiraling, but your left ribs are rotating back so that your rib cage is parallel, but your hips are slightly angled forward. Bend your front knee more deeply than potentially you want to. We're building heat here. We're going to stay for two more breaths. In. Breathe all the way out. And just one more in. And exhale. As you breathe in, both arms reach overhead. Turn your feet in. As you exhale, fold down into your legs. We'll take Prasarita Padatanasana, either A variation with your palms down, or B variation, binding onto the big toes, pulling up against that downward pressure of your toes. Both are perfect, but you're going to work to slip your shoulders up and away from your ears. You want to secure your blades on your back muscularly with the shoulder girdle. Okay, just two breaths here. Those of you that feel tight, push your sitting bones up. Those of you that feel very mobile, draw your sitting bones together and slightly down towards your hamstrings. As you breathe in, take your fingertips under the chest, elongate the spine forward, look forward, turn your feet out now, and you'll bend your left knee coming into a pose called Skandasana. Now some of you will have bodies where your left heel automatically lifts up, that's fine, it's perfect. But everyone move your pubis back and extend your sternum up, okay? Rotate your right outer butt down so that your kneecap and your toes point up, and then just widen your chest. This side of the body is really similar to what we've been doing throughout class already, okay? Take a big inhale if you want. You can twist your chest open to the right. As you exhale, circle your arm over your head and turn towards the opposite edge of your mat into a lunge swiveling onto the ball of the back foot. Now you'll grab your block and set up triangle pose, rotating your right heel to the floor, straightening your left leg to any degree, okay? Turn your, right, turn your chest up towards the ceiling and lift your right arm up. Now every time I'm in this pose, I'm checking in with my pelvis. I'm hooking my tailbone towards my back heel and I'm pulling my pubic bone up just slightly. Lean the chest back, find a rotation through the spine and especially secure your left shoulder onto the back. To accentuate your right waist, I want you to take your arm over your head, big inhale. As you exhale, just face the floor, swivel your back heel up, return your block where it was. Step into a plank. You can be on fingertips, you can be on your palms. As you exhale, put your knees on the ground, shift your butt back to your heels. Take your fingers behind you. It's not a big back bend to start but you will hook your tailbone under so you start to pull length in the quadriceps. Okay, it's a, a prep, a, a little preview of a back bend. And then let your butt come down onto your heels. Come firm into a cow spine, tuck your toes. Exhale, lift your pelvis into downward facing dog. You'll take a big breath in. And breathe out. Left leg lifts up as you inhale, hips are square. Exhale, step forward to your left thumb, reach for your block if you want it. Breathe in, elongate the front leg and your spine. As you exhale, undulate the chest down. And again, inhale, roll up your back. Exhale, release down through the front body. Last time, inhale, the back body lifts, you look up. Exhale, and fold. And breathe in. Come on up, right? Exhale, rebend your front knee, ground your right heel to the floor, free up your block. Inhale, circle up into your warrior two. Now, just start to really um, become attuned with your body. Roll the right inner thigh back, but spiral the right ribs towards your back foot. Sink into your front knee like your thigh is um, a chair, okay? Take two breaths in, and exhale, breathe out. One more in, and exhale. Inhale, straighten front leg. Turn your feet in, reach up, lift your back ribs up. Exhale, fold down into your legs, 
drop your skull down. Either A variation or D variation. You're gonna take a couple of breaths here, working the back of the legs longer. Try not to sit heavy in the heels, shifting your butt back behind the feet. Take some weight forward into the balls of the feet so that you're really situated um, vertically. As you breathe in, fingertips to the floor, elongate your spine forward and turn your feet out, and then bend your right knee into Skandasana, side two. Find extension through the whole front length of your torso, flex your left foot, firm your left quad, and potentially take this open twist to the left side. Take your top arm up and over your head. Turn towards your new front of your mat into a lunge. Grab your block and set up triangle pose, straightening front leg and just rolling the heart up towards the ceiling. Secure your bottom shoulder onto the back. And start to unlock your right knee, especially if you're someone who sits in the joints with hyperextended joints. You can always work on pulling all five of the front toes away from the floor if that's um, a thing that you're working on. Take your top arm, reach it all the way over your head. Turn your heart up, 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 and then bring your hand down onto the floor. As you breathe in, plank pose, either fingertips or palms. Put your knees down, shift your butt back. Take your hands behind you and just hook your tail under. You're welcome to lift a tiny bit more if that feels right to you. Draw your shoulders onto the back so your chest is open. And then sit your butt onto your heels. Cow spine, tuck the toes, look up. Downward facing dog. Okay, so we're gonna exercise a different muscle in our brains by moving dynamically now, not ever stopping. So peek your ears and stick with me. So as you inhale, raise your right leg up, square hips. Exhale, step forward to your right thumb. Inhale, straighten your front leg, potentially flex your foot. Exhale, rebend your front knee, ground your back heel to the floor. Inhale, come up to warrior two. Just settle as you exhale, clarify the pose. Inhale, straighten your front leg, take your arms overhead, and then turn your feet out. Exhale, goddess pose, bend your knees, take your forearms down to your inner knees. Inhale, reach your left arm way up and over your head for a huge side stretch. And then kind of circle your chest forward as you take the arms and spine back to neutral. Inhale, right arm up and over your head. Exhale, circle forward and back to the center. Inhale, straighten your legs, turn your feet in. And as you exhale, fold into Prasarita Padottanasana. We're not going to stay. Inhale, elongate the spine forward, turn your feet up. Exhale, bend your left knee. Inhale, take the twist open. Exhale, come into a lunge and set up triangle pose. Inhale, right arm reaches up to the ceiling. Exhale, arm overhead, take a plank pose. Breathe in. Exhale, put your knees down, shift your butt back. Roll up through your spine. A little bit more of a back bend as you inhale. Exhale, sit your butt down. Cow spine, tuck your toes, breathe in. Let's come to a plank, actually, this time. And as you exhale, shift your butt back, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Exhale, step to your left thumb, block or not. Straighten front leg, look forward with your sternum. Exhale, re-bend your front knee, set up for your two. Inhale, you start to windmill up. Exhale, you really land. Inhale, both legs straighten, turn the foot in, both feet up. Exhale, goddess pose. Right arm comes overhead, huge side stretch. Exhale, circle the arm forward, rounding the spine and then extending the spine. Inhale, left arm overhead. Exhale, round forward and then lift your sternum. Inhale, arms overhead, turn your feet in. Exhale, press through your Padottanasana, fold. Inhale, raise, send the spine forward, turn your feet up. Exhale, bend your right knee. Take your twist. Nestle your shoulder to the inner knee. Arm comes overhead, turn towards your new front. Triangle pose. 
Back heel down, inhale, straighten front leg. Exhale, turn the spine. Arm comes overhead with your inhale. Exhale, look to the floor. You'll come to plank pose. Inhale, step back. Exhale, knees down. It's like you're coming through an extended child's pose and then rolling up. Fingers behind you, open the front body, lift your hips. Exhale, butt to the heels, launch to a plank pose. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, I want you to take three breaths. Hold your stillness in downward facing dog. Widen your inner shoulder heads while you're breathing here. And anchor your heels down to the floor, but slide your sitting bones up and away from your heels. Push the floor away with your back. That's super important. Really slide your shoulders slightly up towards your ears without losing um, the space and the width at the base of the shoulders. Take one more breath in. You can lift your heels. Exhale, bend your knees. I want you to walk your hands to the back of the mat. So you're in a rag doll at the back of your mat. Just reach for your block with one of your hands and shift it forward towards the top of your mat. Okay? Take your arms behind your back, interlock your fingers. If that's too tough, you have a belt to hang on to and arc the arms forward, but otherwise interlace your fingers. You can squeeze heels and hands together, or you can slide the wrists further apart. Okay? All options work, but slide your shoulders away from your ears and arc the arms forward. Breathe in, bend your knees, look forward with your sternum, look up. Exhale, fold into your legs, switch the grip of your hands. Breathe in, bend your knees again, skiers pose, look forward with your heart. Exhale, fold to your legs, release your hands down the backs of the thighs. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, looking forward. Exhale, keep your knees bent and walk forward. Big inhale, lift your heels. Bend your knees, look forward, you can step, step, or hop to the top. Feet together now, inhale, elongate the spine. As you exhale, fold down into your legs. Stand all the way up, reach your arms to the ceiling, gaze up at the top. Exhale, hands to the heart. Breathe in, reach all the way up, gaze up. Exhale, fold into your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, spine reaches forward, look forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step your right foot and your left foot back and bend your elbows halfway to the floor. Put your pelvis and your thighs on the ground. Roll your shoulders down the back. Firm your quads and pull with your palms. Exhale, shift to hands and knees. Take your dog pose. We're going to breathe for three. In. And out. And again, breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. One more in. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step, step, or hop to the top. Inhale, elongate the spine, look forward. Exhale, fold down into your legs. Inhale, rise up, arms reaching to the ceiling, look up. Exhale, fold back down, we'll loop these together. Inhale, spine extended beyond the toes. Exhale, left foot, right foot, step back. You bend your elbows halfway to the floor. One more, cobra. Pelvis and thighs come down. Roll your shoulders down the back. Pull with your palms. Not pushing, pulling. Exhale, roll up and over your toes. Piking the pelvis back. Three here, in. Exhale. Breathe in, breathe out, one more in, exhale, bend your knees, look forward, left foot, right foot to the top, inhale, elongate spine, exhale, fold to your legs, inhale, stand up, arms reach to the ceiling, gaze up, exhale, fold into your legs, last time, Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. 
Exhale, step or jump back, bend your elbows. And this time you can come into upward facing dog. Slide your toes back, roll over the tippy toes, and pull with the palms. Exhale, pike the pelvis back. We've got three breaths. In. And breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. One more in. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step, step, or hop to the top. Inhale, spine elongates. As you exhale, fold into your legs and pause. Relift your chest and heel toe your feet apart so they're about hips width distance. Okay, you can keep a little micro bend in your knees, never locking the knees straight, pretty much ever. Okay, I want you to ground your, your left set of fingertips, reach your right arm up to the ceiling, and you're going to bend your left knee forward as if you're trying to touch the upper arm with your left kneecap. Rotate your belly, rotate your chest. Take a big inhale here, reaching up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, bend both knees equally and backstroke your arm, bringing the fingertips down to the floor. As you breathe in, reach your left arm forward and up. As you're making that, that um, upswing, your left leg straightens and your right knee bends. It should feel organic. Stay here for a moment for this first round so that we're matching the opposite side. But we're going to make this dynamic movement and backstroke continuously. So inhale here. Exhale, the arm circles back and then down. Right arm picks up. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, reach back and down. Left side. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, it comes down. One more time, right and left. Inhale, right arm picks up. Exhale, releases down. One more time. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, both arms down. Keep the knees bent. Inhale, chair pose. So I want you to shift your weight into your heels and then add isometrics. Your feet are sliding apart. Your knees are squeezing an imaginary block and it should bring you into your glute knees so that you really feel where to um, support yourself in this kind of balancing pose. As you breathe in, stand all the way up, touch the palms together, look up. And then pull your right knee into your chest and cross your ankle over the opposite knee to get figure four chair pose. It's not going to be very long. Hand on the ankle and the inner knee. I want you to move your weight back into your heel. Push your pubic bone back and then slide your heart up. Grip onto your ankle with your right hand and then pull your foot up to the upper inner thigh for tree pose. Vrikshasana. Use the sole of the foot to spin your left inner thigh back. And rather than um, yanking on the right thigh out, I want you to slip it forward a little more so that your hips really face forward. Arms can reach up. Now lift your back ribs up and smooth your front ribs down. Left hand comes onto the waist. Right, thought, right piece fingers will grab your big toe in yogi toe lock. Or you can hang onto the back of your right leg. Okay, you'll extend your leg out to the side. And you can either keep your left hand on your waist for security. You could reach it out for a counterbalance, or it can come over the head. Now push your foot into the yogi toe lock that you have, and then re-bend your knee. Okay, take your left hand to your hip, circle the knee forward, and then step your foot down, hips with distance apart. Chair pose, sweep your arms up, feel that same isometric spreading of your feet and squeezing of your knees. Slide your sternum up higher, as you breathe in, stand up, touch your balls together, look up. Left knee into the chest. Pull it up using your hands and then cross the ankle over opposite knee. Come into your figure four, chair pose. Okay, move your booty back. Well, and then extend your sternum up, up, up. Right hand to the waist. Catch your ankle with your left hand and just pick it up to a tree pose. Arms can reach up if that feels right to you. Now you're using the sole of the foot to spin the inner thigh back as your left thigh moves forward, not back. Okay? Lift up for your back ribs. And then right hand to the waist. 
Left fingers bind onto the big toe or hang onto the back of the thigh as you extend the leg up to the side. Okay? Just like you did on your back at the beginning of class, draw your left hip crease down and then hug in through the right hip. Your arm can reach up, it can reach out, it can be on the waist. All are perfect. Okay? Take your right hand down onto your waist, bend your airborne leg, cross the thigh back in front of the chest, and step your foot down. Chair pose into Katasana. Breathe in. Fingertips sweep down and back up. Exhale, fold to your legs. Breathe in, elongate the spine forward. You can take a vinyasa, stepping or jumping back. Inhale, take an upward facing dog or cobra anytime. Exhale, pipe the pelvis back, downward facing dog. Inhale, your right leg lifts up, but this time I want you to open your hips up for this down dog split. Exhale, step forward to your right thumb. Same kind of quality, open hip, standing split. So your left leg will go way up and up. And as you exhale, square your hips, pull your knee in towards your skull. Take a half moon, fingertips to the floor. Left leg lifts back up with open hips. And right away, turn the heart open. Look to the floor, bend your standing knee, big step back to warrior two. As you inhale, straighten front leg, lean back. Exhale, hands to the floor. No vinyasa, breathe in, step into a plank pose, super clean. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, open the hips up high. Exhale, square the hips and step forward. Standing split, open the hips, breathe in. Square the hips, knee pulls in towards the skull. Right away, half moon. Breathe in, rotate the chest open. Exhale, look down, bend your standing knee, big step back. Inhale, reverse triangle. Exhale, hands to the floor. Breathe in, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, right leg lifts. Inhale, you can open the hips up. Now square the hips and step forward to your right thumb. Pause, spin your back heel to the floor. Now, if you need your belt for binding, hold it in your left hand, okay? Your right palm will nestle inside of your right foot. It can come onto a block. It can grip onto your ankle, or your palm can be on the floor. Your left arm reaches up, and you want to just make sure the belt is draped behind your body, okay? Inwardly spin both of your arms, and you can reach underneath your thigh for the belt behind you, or you can bind your fingers together, okay? Now, stretch your arms long, and then I want you to lean your torso back over your right thigh. Bend your front knee forward, and you're in bound Karsva Konasana. B. Okay, stay here. Breathe in. And breathe out. Only one more. In. And exhale. Undo your bind. Left arm reaches up. And then bring your left palm to the floor. We're going to take a side plank on the left side to release the right hip, which I know you felt the work on. So you'll either step back into a super simple side plank, you can take a tree pose in your right leg, or you can bring the ball of the foot to the floor and use it to help accentuate the length through your right side body. Bring your right palm to the floor, traditional plank. Breathe in, exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts up, inhale. Exhale, step forward to your left thumb tip. Rotate your back heel to the floor, okay? So nestle your left palm and shoulder inside of your left shin, and your right arm will reach up to the ceiling. Either hold it onto your belt or free from your belt. Now, keep your outer shoulder inner knee really glued together. Internally spin your top arm, reach under your thigh and bind fingers. Now, stretch your arms as long as you can, and your upper arm bones will be squeezing in towards the thigh. Lean back and then hook your tailbone towards your right heel. Two big breaths. Inhale. And exhale. 
and again, breathe in. And breathe out. Unbind, right arm reaching up. Right palm comes down to the floor for your side plank. Variation. Or keep it traditional with your feet together. Okay? All are perfect. Bring your palm to the floor. Plank pose. Breathe in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, take a big inhale. As you exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or hop to the top. Fold down into your legs. Breathe in, stand third. Come to chair pose, which we toss it up. And then stand up, hands to the heart. Okay, so with this kind of a sequence, we can take many peak poses that are related to all of the component pieces that we've been working on throughout class. Yesterday we did a Vishva Mitrasana um, modification, which is a very funky and wacky pose. Today we're going to do um, one that might be a little more familiar to you, Bird of Paradise. Okay, so it's, um, we've done all of this extension through the inner legs, lots of flexion through the hips with the legs in external rotation, and binding through the arms. So we'll combine these elements now. Okay, so um, really helpful to have a belt handy. So take yourself into a forward fold with your feet separated as wide as your hips, or maybe even a tiny bit wider. We're gonna do the right side first, okay? So um, have your belt accessible to you, and I want you to keep your right fingertips on the ground, reach your left arm up to the ceiling. If you're using your belt, take your belt with you and drape it behind your back, okay? I'll show you the way the belt works, but I'm not gonna personally use it myself. Now, I want you to internally rotate your arm just like you did a moment ago in Parsvakanasana, and then reach your right arm in between your legs, bind the belt around your right hip. Be really sure that you're not giving yourself a thong with your arms or the belt, but that you're around the right side of your body. Okay, look to the floor, shift your weight onto your left foot, prop up onto the ball of your right foot. Stretch your arms long to squeeze up our arm bones together. Lower your butt and look forward with your chest. And then stand all the way up, picking your right foot up with you. Pressurize your arms together, and then start to extend your right leg to any degree, out to the side, okay? It's a big load on the arms, so keep squeezing them in. Squeeze your left hip in, lift your sternum, and release your pubis down. So hard to do. Bend your airborne leg. I always like to think like I'm putting a brick on a porcelain table. Really light landing with the foot. Ground the foot, and then unravel. And then release the arm down. Okay, second side. Keep your knees a little bent. Your left fingertips stay down, right arm reaches up, holding onto the belt, drape it behind your body. Internally spin the arms, reach in between legs with your left arm, and then bind. Okay, transfer your weight to your right foot. Start to lower the butt down like you're going to come into a chair. And start to shift forward by looking up with your sternum. Stand up, taking the leg with you. Squeeze your arms together and then start to extend your leg out to the side and work to lift your sternum and release your pubic bone down. Take a moment or two, body the pose. And then bend your airborne leg like a brick on a porcelain table, light landing. Fingertips to the floor, right arm up, breathe in. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, look forward. And then just land your seat towards your heels like you're propped in a little perch. You can even bring your hands onto your thighs, push down with your thighs, go up with your torso. And then for some of you, it might feel like a fall. You can reach your arms forward, or if you need your fingers behind you, you can use them. But lean your butt back until it grounds to the floor, okay? Recline all the way back on your backs. Then I want you to just allow your knees to shift right and left, right and left. 
So we've done a lot of flexion through the hip flexors. It's a little redundant. And we want to start to open up this area again. Okay, so let your legs tip over to the right. Press your right ankle over the left outer thigh and then pressurize the left thigh to the floor. And then I want you to create with your you're pulling your thigh bone down and forward towards that bottom edge of your mat as you hook your tailbone under. So this is going to really target um, hip, really the hip flexors in a lot of different areas, potentially your quads, but especially your iliacus, which is um, a beautiful muscle to open and prep for tail pose. Take your ankle off of the outer thigh, swivel the knees up to the ceiling and in the other direction. Ankle over outer thigh, and then slide the right thigh forward as you pressurize the right thigh down and hook your tailbone towards your knee tips. Now the other beautiful thing about this pose is that it offers a gentle twist in the spine, which kind of frees up the spine for back bending, which we'll do now. Take your ankle off of the outer thigh, swivel the knees up, feet as wide as the hips. I want you to take your arms down alongside the body and grip onto your mat with your hands. I want you to actually pull the mat apart, and as you do that, prop up your chest and scoot your shoulders under the back. It's gonna make you feel like you're kind of opening the rib cage to the ceiling. Keep tearing your mat apart, push your feet down, hook your tail under, and lift your back body away from the floor. Take your shoulders under the back even more. Push with your feet, pull with your feet simultaneously, and then pull your mat apart and see where you get access to activity in your upper back. This is meant to illuminate um, in your own mind where you're working in bridge pose. So either stay here gripped onto your mat or interlock your fingers and wrap our crap. Arms go under even more. Push down with your arms, push down with your skull to move your chin away from your chest and take one or two or three breaths here. Whatever feels suitable for you in this moment in this day. And then uncross your hands, slide your shoulder blades apart, and roll down your spine from upper back to lower back. Exhale. Okay, just a little. Let your legs swivel side to side. Your windshield wipers. Okay, one more back bend. I'd like you to choose if you'd prefer um, a supported back bend with two blocks stacked or side by side on the leaning facet. Or if you want another bridge pose, you can do any variations in bridge, like extending a leg. Um, or you can take um, a wheel pose. I'll talk you through a wheel pose. So your hands are going to come next to your ears. Fingers point in the same direction as your toes. And you're going to hug your elbows in. Now I want you to skip that step. If you're accustomed to doing the, the step where you land on your skull, skip that. It's just my personal preference. And keep hugging your elbows in the whole time. Now exhale your air. And as you inhale, push all the way up. Straighten your elbows. Now, what I want you to do is work on pushing your arms straight, pushing your legs straight, hang your skull anywhere it lands is perfect, and you'll be working to inner spiral the legs. Move your chest towards the wall you're looking at and hook your tailbone towards your knee pits. Okay, two or three big breaths. When you're coming down, tuck your chin to your chest, bend your elbows, land on your back, not your head. Okay? Feet wide, knees together. If you want, you can stretch your wrists. You can do some um, hand wrist circles. But your legs are in 
contracted breaths. Feet wide, knees knocked together. Take your hands onto your belly. I know what you did. Just take a couple of big calming breaths as you let your spine neutralize and settle after that big back bend. So it's important, it's really important to take time in a neutral position after peak back bends before we start to move in any other direction. Okay? So heel toe your feet closer together. Straighten your left leg, take your right leg up to the ceiling. This is not a hamstring stretch. Interlock your fingers behind your leg and then push your leg forward into your hands. Push forward. You're tractioning your back. It's a spine neutralizer. It's not a hamstring stretch. And then bend your right knee, take the other side, left leg up to the ceiling, interlock fingers, and then like really drive your thigh forward into Listen carefully, this is a brain buster, okay? Right hand on the front of your right knee. Left hand on the face of your thigh. Push your legs into your hands and press and pull the hands back into the legs. So it doesn't look like anything's happening, but there's a lot of activity happening. This is a way to therapeutically reset your hips. Switch to the other side. Press forward and pull with the left side. Push. Right hand and press right knee. Switch one more time. And then switch. Okay, take the heels of your hands to your outer knees. Press the hands in, the knees out. Oh, this feels so good on the sacrum. If you have any asymmetric pain in your pelvis, this is a really good thing to do. Take your forearms, crisscross them so they look like this-ish. Slip your palms to the inner knees, squeeze your knees in, push your hands out. It feels so good on your sacrum and your SI joints. Okay, switch again. Hands press in, knees press out. Crisscross forearms, knees squeeze in, hands press out. Okay, now we're ready. Cross your ankle, right ankle over left knee. Thread the needle. You can also take Gomukhasana if you want a little more. And um, that's when your right knee crosses up and over the left knee and you catch your feet and pull the thighs down. Now, or pull the feet down. Now, what you would do is work to hook your tailbone down as you pull your thighs closer to the chest. Switch sides. It's either figure four or Sukta Gomukhasana, or cow kids pose on your back. Okay. Turn your knees into your chest, rock up to a seated pose, or roll to the side and come up. One more pose. I know we're running a little short on time, um, but let's just do one more. Um, I want you to allow your thighs to butterfly open. It's going to be called Tarasana. So, it's a, a sister pose of Bhattakonasana where the heels are close. Your feet are going to slip further away. I love putting a block underneath my head um, so that I don't have to strain to meet the feet, but that the block really comes up and just supports my head. Okay. Feels really quite nice. Allow your spine to round. Now, since you're at home, you can stay here longer if you want to stay here longer. But if you're ready for a rest, you can take your blocks. My favorite way to support this pose lately is taking blocks on a low level and then just using some kind of soft prop, which I did not grab, but I'm putting either a bolster in front of the blocks or a rolled up blanket or a couch cushion in front of the blocks. So it should create like an incline like this. I 
I'm just going to use blocks today underneath my thighs. And just recline yourself back. <clears throat> Take your arms down and come alongside the body so that your palms face up. And you want to relax the legs so they just naturally flop open. Slide your shoulders onto your back. Give yourself a long neck, an open throat. And while you're in stillness here, I want you to just scan your body mentally and see if you can detect any unnecessary activity. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like tension. Sometimes it just reads as holding, especially in the neck and the shoulders. We tend to have this um, constant low grade grip. It's like a stress um, response that exists in the body. So try to unclench your teeth, relax your shoulders. still, but just start to notice the sounds in your environment. Sounds of a left lion moving around the house. Or birds chirping outside. Cars driving by. Closer to your body, and notice the sound of your breath. Some of you might be able to feel your heart beating. Take your hands up to your belly and just feel the movement of your breath in your hands. Bend your knees. Roll to your right and come back up into a seated pose and do so efficiently without wasting movement, time, energy. Align your spine with that intelligence and extend your virtual antenna up from your crown. Broaden across your chest, wide in the front, wide in the back. Feel a, an appreciation for the kind of impact you can make in your own life. Totally shifting your state of mind just by committing to this practice. Take your hands.
hands into a prayer at your heart and first just give yourself the acknowledgement that you deserve this practice takes effort a lot of effort to maintain or begin or begin again so give yourself credit thank yourself send yourself love for being on your mat today and then as a community separated in our individual homes let's all link up let's breathe in together and clear it out slow breath in for only